Good evening and welcome to Lead Life Enrichment and Development. I'm your host, Maurice Blair. And today we have Miss Ruth Hedgewood. How you doing? I'm great. How about you today? I'm doing fine. And we're going to have a reverse role here, so to speak. Um, you'll be interviewing me. Okay. Is that correct? That's correct. So this is going to be a little bit different for our viewing audience, but um, it, it'll be a treat. I'm sure it will. So um, I'm not going to hold your reins back. I'm going to let you go with it. You do your thing. Okay. Well, first, we know that you do LEAD. Can you tell us what LEAD stands for? LEAD stands for Life Enrichment and Development, which is a nonprofit organization that I started in 1997. We specialize in three areas, career development, health and fitness, and self-esteem programs. And um, it's, it, it's, it's, really, um, it's really something, you know, some people call to be a minister, a call to do this, that, or the other. Mm -hmm. Pretty much well, it was a calling for me, okay. and it, you know, you know, it's something that I'm gonna, I'm committing myself to, to, you know, for the rest of my life. That's wonderful that you feel that it is a calling, so you know that you're walking in your purpose and doing what you're supposed to do. Exactly. So, what are some of the events that lead sponsors? Well, we sponsor. Um, we have what's called, which is up and coming this year, um, August the fifth, August the sixth. Uh, Senior Citizens Day. Okay. Um, it's going to be at Southland Gaming and Racing. Um, it's one of my it's the, my favorite event, I would okay. say, because what it does, it allows um, a senior citizens in Crittenden County and even across the bridge here in Memphis um, to be able to um, network if they, you know, some network, believe it or not. Right. But mostly they, they get to know each other. And um, it, that day is declared that day for them through the mayor. He gave us a proclamation a few years ago declaring mm -hmm. um, the first Wednesday in August, Senior Citizens Day, um, which um, entails bingo for them. We have several vendors do health screenings. We have great food for them, great music, and they really enjoy it. And it's going to be up in um, the starting gate room. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyone who's um, watching the show interested, actually they could give me a call at area code 901 503 or they can call you, is that right? That's correct. Good deal. So the Senior Citizen Day is your favorite event. What made that your favorite event of all the events that lead sponsors? Well, first and foremost, um, I recognized and our organization recognized that, you know, when you it's always something be going on with the youth. Mm -hmm. But our seniors, they, it's as if they, you know, kind of put to the side on the shelf, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Nothing going on, not enough going on for them. And, 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 and they're there um, in the nursing homes. And a lot of times they don't even get the, the, the families. It, and it's, it's sad sometimes they don't even come by like they should and visit them and, and, and you know they, they they're humans we all and if we keep living we'll be there as well we'll be there as well you're right Ruth so um, that right there was the main thing that was gnawing at me to, to create an event for them and, and, I, and I feel in the next year or two we're going to actually increase it and do two events for them as well Good deal. a different event I think that's wonderful so what motivated you to start this organization Lee well um, before I started LEAD, I actually drove a truck on the Interesting. road. Interesting. Yeah, truck driver, um, about 17 years. And I would be in various states, make friends across the country. Mm -hmm. And um, it's amazing when I would deliver at certain places, even metropolitan cities and rural areas, you know, you would stop and talk to people. and I. Um, for the most part, I've always been attracted to older people, you know, okay. you know, I, it's a lot of wisdom with them. Definitely. And so um, they would, you know, talk and, you know, I would, you know, I said, you know what? Right even in my own backyard, right there in my own backyard, it's, 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 it's a need to create, you know, activities to en engage more with them. And, and it's not just lead engaging with them. Um, we invite um, other organizations to come in at, the t at that particular time 
and um, and get involved and, and and enjoy the festivities with them. And they and that's what they love. They love that as well. Um, but for the most part, the, the the need to 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 engage to get uh, seniors and let them know we still love them, we still care about them, and they're mm -hmm. still needed. Good deal. So where do you see LEAD five years from now? It's been going strong for a long time. You have great plans. So five years from now, where do you see LEAD in yourself? Well, you know, we've had some bumpy times, some, you know, some you know, challenging times. That's in anything, in any business in general. But um, I see LEAD um, being partnering with more organizations and businesses. Okay. Um, I see LEAD um, touching more individuals and, and families. Um, and, and living up to its, its creed and its laws and bylaws. Okay. You mentioned partnering with more businesses. So if a business wanted to partner with you, can we tell yes. the audience how they can contact you again? Yes, they can contact me at, um, at mblair, with my, through my email, mblair025 at gmail.com, or they can call, contact me at area code 901-503-4866. Good deal. Okay, you work with the youth and the seniors. We've mm -hmm. talked about the seniors, so let's go back to the youth. What advice would you give today's youth? I think you work in the school system, is that correct? Yeah, I work okay. here, at, I work at the academies of West Memphis. Been there for 10 years. And um, when you, when you t lead, one other aspect of lead is, is the youth. Mm -hmm. And it, it was the perfect fit, me working in the district, working at the high school was mm -hmm. the perfect fit for me to, so to speak, help evangelize Lee, get the word out there and, and get it in the homes of the, the, the students and the parents. And, um, you know, with, it's, it's amazing because 15, 20, 30 years ago, I never would have thought, would, would have actually dreamed about um, being involved with the community because I was kind of laid back and kind of mm -hmm. off to myself. You're right. But by traveling the country again, and I have to go back to that because what it did, yeah, and I tell students all the time, you know, when you travel, it opens your eyes to a whole new world. And, and, and most of our students in, in Crittenden County, they, they yeah, surprisingly, some of them hadn't even been over the bridge. I found that true with my students that right. I taught. Yes. And but but by traveling, by um, and, and and you know, and I'm I'm a big advocate of reading. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a newcomer as well, Miss Berlin, um, 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 Wilson. Williamson. Williamson. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Um, she's coming on, and she's gonna you know it'll be a perfect fit for that. Um, she's going to, and I'm excited about Ms. Verlin as well. I've been knowing her for years. Uh, okay. I, I knew her for cakes first. <laughs> That's but, what I love, her but cakes. That, but, but, you know, but her gift is, 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 is being able to touch the youth through um, literacy. Okay. But back to your question, um, being able to, with lead, being able to get into the school districts, get into actually school district and work with our youth, to, to, to show them that it's a, it's a bigger picture, bigger world right. than just Crittenden County, than just Memphis, than just Arkansas. And um, that really was the mo a motivating factor for me. Okay, so that's your motivating factor and advice to travel more and increase right. literacy. Right, and, and also with our youth to, you know, to stay patient. I think our youth, they don't see that delayed gratification. Sure. They want it instantly, they want to, you know, whether it's being a part of the honor, uh, honor student or uh, learning how to master reading or um, learning or uh, achieving their own personal goals. I think they've um, kind of shied away from the understanding, the dynamics of mm -hmm. being able to put the work in first right. and, and stay patient, um, believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, they. Believe it or not, it's not even sometimes not even much encouragement from the homes at this day and times. In time, times, but however, be you know, staying encouraged, working hard, and giving time, time. I would tell my our youth to give time, time. Okay. Set short and long term goals, mm -hmm. um, and 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 everything will work itself out. Okay. Always have a plan. Oh, and always have a plan B. That's good advice. 
So if you give that advice to students, what advice would you give to the parents of those students? Because in these days and times, everyone's working, have busy lives, there's right. more stress. So what advice would you give to the parents to help make our youth better for the future? Well, Ruth, you said that um, at this time, a lot of parents are working. Mm -hmm. I would say invest, spend time with your child. Um, listen to your child. Listen. I think when, when kids go astray, it's because um, the, the threads of the family is beginning to unravel and come loose. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's something, you know, when I grew up back in the 60s, um, parents prided themselves on that, mm -hmm. being able to, you know, be there. Of course, you know, back then, you know, one parent could work and take care of a household, but now it takes two sometimes, you know, and then that two has, sometimes has to take a you know, part-time right. job with a full-time job. But being able to spend quality time with your child, um, pay attention to what he or her is saying, mm -hmm. and, and also don't be afraid to discipline them in the right way, but mm -hmm. also reward them. I think sometimes we lean too far to one side when it comes to we, we reward our kids, give them, give them, give them, give them, give them, and, and then where they don't really earn. Right. Um, and, and even on the opposite side of that same stick, sometimes we, we discipline them in harsh ways and they become bitter and not better. I agree. And as a teacher, um, encouragement goes a long way. Even if it's That's something true. simple, just verbal encouragement exactly. does go a long way. You're right. Okay, let's shift our focus a little bit to talk more about work. I know you do lead for nonprofit. You work for the Academies of West Memphis, but I also hear you into health and fitness and a little personal training. Can you tell us about that? Yes, um, I've been a personal trainer. Actually, I got my certifications in Chicago, Illinois in 1991 at the National Academy of Sports and Medicine and Fitness and Nutrition. And uh, it's something I, it's actually been a part of my life even when I was up in 16 years old. Oh, yeah. Years, yes, young. When I started competing as a teenage bodybuilder and when all of the country competed, was very successful, very successful okay. with it. Um, my first competition, I wasn't. I, I think out of 72 competitors, I placed next to last. And, and it was in Louisville, Kentucky. And, and the lesson I learned, and I tell my students all the time, you know, you, know, you, 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 you don't give up. You go back and regroup. Um, I was really out of my league. I was good from Greenville, Mississippi. I was good in Greenville. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I tell students all the time, yeah, you may be smart in your own backyard, <laughs> but you got to go out in this world, compete against others who are just as good. And I had, that was a harsh reality for me. When I left uh, and, and, and went up, uh, the interstate up Interstate 65 and went to Louisville, Kentucky. It was a rude awakening. However, you know, I yeah, I cried. It hurt, but I, I chose. I made a choice to come back and regroup. And I, and I actually, I dedicated myself. My senior year it was my it was coming into my senior year. I remember we had a um, prom. Um, at, right after the prom, I didn't go out with my friends, I went straight, took my clothes off, went to the gym, it was about midnight. Dedicated. I trained, the, um, the night of graduation. Everybody was celebrating and enjoying themselves. Um, I took that cap and gown off, went to the gym and trained because I knew I wanted to do better. And, and, I, and it's, it, was not, it wasn't about the trophy, it wasn't about first place. Mm -hmm. I placed, um, that following year, I did place third out of 70 some competitors. So, but it, that, that wasn't it. It wasn't the placing third, Ruth. It was, it was what you, bec you know, I became in trying to make myself better. Okay. It, it wasn't the goal. It wasn't the trophies. And, and people sometimes, I think we, we look at the awards and forget, you know, what it makes us as a person, how, you know, how it changes us for the better and betterment. And that's what it did. So I worked hard and, um, and like I said, placed third. And, um, and from, that, from that competition on, I always play, I either won the competition or placed first, second, or third. And I think it was maybe 20 some odd competitions I competed in, you know, after that one. That's amazing. But it was the principles of it. And, and, and that work, same principle, Ruth, works in education, works in school, works in whatever you, it, it, you apply. You can apply it to any and everyday life and you, you can make it 
Okay. So what advice would you give to a student who said, well, maybe I don't want to go to college. I want to opt out from that and perhaps want to do something like become, get into the fitness world. What advice would you give to someone like that, especially in today's society with the big common core push and going to college and right. career college and career readiness? Well, college is not for everyone. However, I, I feel, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm a realist, mm -hmm. I feel that one of the big mistakes we, I see it on a daily basis with students and parents, they, they set their, their, ch their children up for disappointment, and this is what I mean by that. Every child may not go to college. It's not made for college. Mm -hmm doesn't have a desire to go to college, but every child can learn and be successful, whether it's a vocation, um, technical school, trade, whatever it may be. But make sure you play the odds in your favor. Mm -hmm. Myself, if I said, you know, I, I, bodybuilding, I was successful at it. But now, if I'd have listened to my uncle back in Greenville, um, boy, you ought to go and play basketball. <laughs> well, I, I, I think, I'm, I'm, well, right now I'm just five, nine and a half, so, I mean, you know, but, but I think you have to be real. I think parents hurt their ch children and end up hurting themselves by, you know, wanting to live out their dreams through their child, mm -hmm. but not allowing the child to, to find themselves, or may not, I'll use the term, create themselves. Okay. Um, that's what life is about, creating oneself, so in doing that, if you don't go to if you don't go to college, find something that you enjoy doing, but that's stacked in your favor, you know, okay. that you enjoy doing, that's stacked in your favor, that you know you can be pretty much well successful at. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So you work at the school. Mm -hmm. You have great things going on. How does the lead tie into your daily job at the school? Well, with the lead, it gives me an, well it, that gives me an opportunity to to um, um, we, we, we work in, actually, we have an after-school program, um, and, and Ms. Jennifer Presley, along with Ms. Burnett, um, and a few other teachers and myself, um, we, that allows LEAD mm -hmm. to come in and, and be a part of functions that we normally wouldn't have the opportunity to be a part of if we weren't, if I wasn't there, if LEAD wasn't there, if I wasn't there and LEAD wasn't there. So it, 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 it you know, I always, te you know, and try to influence kids to stay positive. And that's one thing with LEAD, I, you know, I, 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 that's our beacon light, to stay positive, to stay real, stay true to what you do, but be positive. Um, you're gonna have good days and bad days. Mm -hmm. Life is not a straight line but you have to be able to have the fortitude to keep moving forward in those sh challenging times. And, and I tell students, you may fail this exam, but that doesn't mean you're gonna fail the course. Exactly. You know, you may have a, a uh, even, so to speak, being bullied, mm -hmm. but now, okay, how are you gonna respond to that? What, do you, what are the choices you're gonna make? Are you gonna engage and be just as worse as this person, or are you going to, let an individual, another adult know, but at the same time use, you know, your skills and to, to challenge yourself to be able to outsmart that person. See, it doesn't, you know, in, in everything to every problem is an answer, but you have to have the, the fortitude and the discipline and the desire to really figure it out. So what gives you that push, that motivation, that desire to overcome a challenge? Well, um, with myself, I've, um, it was a challenge. It was challenging with me growing up um, in, in the Delta, Greenville, Mississippi, um, back in the um, 60s and 70s. I know when I, even to go to school, I had to you know, go to the fields and chop cotton, and that's how I got my school clothes, um, believe it or not. And um, it, over the years, it, you know, I appreciate hard work, mm -hmm. but it's, at the same time, I appreciate the rewards hard work delivers. And it helps me even to this day to take, number one, never take anything for granted. Number two, you know, appreciate people. You can learn something from anyone. It doesn't matter. 
what race, color, creed, uh, what age, you can learn something from that person if you keep an open mind and listen and um, listen to them and study them. Um, with, but, you know, pretty much, you know, it's, it's, it's being able, I, I'm, I'm thankful that I, you know, I was able to, we didn't have much, but I was able to, to take what we had and make something. And make something. Something great. That's it. And that's, and, and, and that's the, that, if it's no secret to success, but that's what success is all about. That's what life is all about right there. That's true. So you grew up in Greenville, Mississippi, and you tell us a little bit of what your life was like, but who was your biggest influence growing up? Was it someone locally or a TV personality or? Well, um, it was a combination of both. Okay. Um, I, my, um, I, I, my grandmother, um, she really influenced me growing up. I would watch her um, at a young age. She worked and um, she taught me, you know, just basic things. She said, Maurice, um, I don't care who it is, always approach him with a smile, <laughs> shake the hands, look him in the eye, um, be respectful. You know, and um, you know that even with now, I tell students this that would carry you a long way. Mm -hmm. You know, if you really, if you think about it, you work in the dish in, 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 in the Marion School District. Think about it. Um, how many students you, that come along or pass your way that greet you, come up and greet you first? It's a selective few, but not many. Not many at all. Not You're many right. at all. And and yes, ma'am, no, ma'am that's beginning to become foreign language now mm -hmm. with students. But I tell our, my, our students at, at West Memphis, academies of West Memphis, that would t help take, get you indoors that you normally wouldn't get in as well. You have, to have the, you have to have the intelligence and the intangibles to be successful, but you know, the basics, the foundation, I think my grandmother uh, laid that foundation, I know she did, she laid that foundation for me, my, my stepfather, um, he, 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 he did a wonderful job, my mother, did a wonderful job, and, and if anyone outside of my home who was an influence to me, um, I think I had a, you know, I was an own Schwarzenegger fan. Really? Because, yeah, because he 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 came from Australia, uh, Austria, yeah, Australia, Australia at a young mm -hmm. age. Um, couldn't speak English. Um, went to UCLA, got his degree. Um, he um, became one of the best bodybuilders in the country and in the world. Mm -hmm. um, he became governor. Um, yeah, we know he had a, you know, a mishap in his personal life, but it, life is about overcoming. And, and, and you, know, you know, we all can look back over our shoulders and, and regret one or two things or something you know, we would have done differently, but you can't let that stagnate you. But I would say on was all outside of the home. On was nigga was okay. Kind of kick for me. I like it. So growing up, were you involved in sports? I know you did body bodybuilding, but were you heavily involved in sports? Basketball, football, baseball. Well, I was too slow for track, too <laughs> short for basketball. I, I, I actually went out for football. They kept me on the team for about a year because I was. I was respectful, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I was, and, uh, and and didn't give the coaches no trouble, and um, I, I did any everything they said to the T. But I just wasn't football material at that time because um, at that time in the tenth grade, I think I in my eleventh grade going to my eleventh grade year, I weighed like 113 pounds. So, you know, it just Ooh. it just I know it it just wasn't. But after that year, then I started got into weight training, got into bodybuilding, and I bloomed my senior year, just total metamorphosis. So I know if you, you put your mind in anything, whether you can be an adult, you can be a child, whatever it is, whatever you are, whoever you are, doesn't matter. You set your mind to it, you'll be successful, you know, okay. but you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in yourself. Okay. And, um, and stay, and encourage yourself sometimes. Sometimes, I'm gonna tell you, I mean, you're not gonna get encouragement even from your own family members. So that's why you have to sometimes encourage yourself. That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna have a little fun before we have to wrap it up. So I'm gonna ask you some questions, uh, just a little personal fun questions. Okay. So don't be surprised. I won't. What do you prefer, Pepsi or Coke? 
Coke, because I used to drink their Coke and put them peanuts in it back <laughs> in the day. <laughs> yeah, Coca-Cola, yeah. All right, car or truck? Truck. What used, kind? Used to be car. Pickup. Pickup. Okay, used to be car. Fast cars? Uh, yeah. Then, yeah, fast car. If you had three wishes, what would they be? Hmm. I would say one of them would be I wish that I wish we could find a cure for cancer. Um, I've had I lost um, my father to cancer. I lost my grandmother to cancer, and, and several of the friends. I would say number one, find a cure to cancer. Number two, I would say it would have to be I I would wish you know world peace. Mm -hmm. um, and number three, it would be the um, to maintain good health throughout my, the rest of my life. Good deal. So when you're alone in your truck, what do you think about and driving then, down the road? It's not what I think about. <laughs> it's not what I think. When I'm in my truck, and anybody that know me in my truck, I have a fetish for music. Really? I mean, I, 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 mean, I love music, and I have about $3,000 worth of music in my truck. and. Um, not in my truck, so I don't want nobody to break in it, but, I, put it, but I, I, I love my music. I, everything from Luther Vandross to um, Parliament to um, um, Ronnie Millsap. I like country and western. I like rap. I like R&B. I like jazz. I love music, and the music really, it, it, you know, it works for me. Last one before I have to turn it back over to you. What song describes you best? What song describes me best? Mm -hmm. um, I would say, um, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. I would say it would have to be the song that came from the Eisner Brothers, that the Eisner Brothers produced from uh, the album Go For Your Guns. It's mm -hmm. called Living in the Life. You can Google it, you can listen. That describes me to a T. Um, that, that song that hits him is right on point with me, Living in the Life by the Eyes of the Brothers. Okay. Well, Mr. Blair, I appreciate you allowing me to be the guest host on your show today. It was a pleasure. Well, I, I, I really, you, you really hit me with some questions, <laughs> heavy questions, but I, I tell you what, I was sleepy before I, right before we started, but I'm wide awake now. But yeah, I want to say I appreciate you. You did a su super job, superb job. Thank you. And um, I'm hoping our viewing audience see more of you as a co-host to this nice show, wonderful show, because I know they get sick and tired of looking at me, <laughs> you know. But, um, but again, you know, I want to say that, you know, I have a great deal of respect for you. Number one, you're a go-getter. Number two, um, that's why I asked you to come and be a part of our team. Number two, you're focused and you believe in what you're doing. And number three, you know how to flex and deal with people. See, I, 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 you know, I, this isn't just something I discovered just overnight. Over the duration of years, I've watched you. You know how to deal with all types of people, and that's one of the main important ingredients to success is being able to do that. So, you know, keep up the good. You, Ruth, you keep up the good work. And Thank you. Keep setting those goals and um, leave. We'll be behind you 100 percent in whatever shape, fashion, or form. It has to, you know, we'll take on to, to support you, so don't, don't fret over that, okay? Thank you. I appreciate yes, yes, it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And um, again, we're winding down. And thanks again. And I'd like to say to all this, thanks for tuning in to Lead Life Enrichment and Development, building, building, building bigger minds, brighter spirits, and better bodies. Thank you. <laughs>